Okay, this is the uh, engine compartment of a 1969 Plymouth GTX. Not a Roadrunner, this guy is a GTX. So it started life with a 440 in it. The only thing you could get in a GTX was a 440 or a Hemi. That's it. Nothing else was ever offered. And this guy has the original numbers matching engine still intact. Has the correct carburetor, has the correct intake for, or intake for uh, a 1969 cast iron just the way it should be. The uh, distributor is still the original Presto Light distributor with a new vacuum advance pot on it. The correct air cleaner for 1969. The uh, heater is still hooked up and functional to the passenger compartment. You can see the engine has been out and completely freshened up. Uh, everything is new in this motor. Everything has uh, been done correctly. Correct uh, cast iron exhaust manifolds on them with the uh, correct uh, uh, valve pan covers also. Everything is as it was when it left the factory in 1969. It appears to be some type of a high temp coating uh, put on the uh, manifolds, the exhaust manifolds themselves so that they don't deteriorate, so they don't rust. Um, does have the correct Presto Light tan cap on it, the original alternator with it. Guaranteed it's going to have new belts on it because Donnie puts new belts on everything. Um, hoses are correct top and bottom, correct style hoses with the correct spring clamps on them also. And also for your radiator um, uh, or heater, uh, heater cooling, uh, heater cooling, heater warming hoses. Uh, also have the uh, uh, spring clamps on them. Dual horns on this particular guy. Someone's put a new washer bottle on it because they turn yellow, deteriorate, and just literally fall apart. Has a correct style 26-inch um, high flow radiator with it and the correct shroud and the correct nice tight clutch fan on it yet too. Uh, Donnie put a new battery in it so this guy's all set to go there. The radiator core supports never been disrupted has the original fender tag on it, which coincides with the uh, serial number on the dashboard. It still has the six-sided rivets on it. Under hood pad, just the way it should be. This car has no deterioration underneath the lips of the uh, hood or deck lid or anything, <clears throat> just the way it was uh, in 1969. So there's no Bondo, to my knowledge, on this car anywhere. We've gone over it, and we really can't find anything. It has an electronic ignition uh, installed on it, two-speed wiper motor. Uh, dual stage master cylinder, which is new. You can see it is a replacement with apparently new uh, brake lines also. Car does not have power steering or power brakes. A lot of these cars were ordered that way. I know I ordered my Hemi that way. No power steering, no power brakes. The, um, um, I think I did say the fan shroud is the correct fan shroud on it. Uh, the uh, drive line is a correct for this car. Dana 60 carrier with a 354 ratio in it, and this guy is a four speed. That's the way these things came. If you got a 440 or a Hemi, you automatically got a Dana 60 carrier with it. Nine and three quarter inch ring, absolutely the most indestructible uh, rear end that was ever released by any manufacturer for a muscle car. Uh, the interior of this engine compartment is just as fresh and clean as you could ever, ever hope to find one. And again, everything's been taken out, refreshed, rebuilt, and put back together as it was in 1969. Uh, there's not one single thing. It even has the uh, nice, resilient new uh, flap that seals up, that uh, makes the uh, air go through the radiator, run up over the uh, radiator. Uh, everything on this thing uh, appears to be as it was in 1969. These motors made an advertised 375 horsepower, which was grossly underrated. These things pushed these cars along a lot faster than a 383 ever thought about pushing a car like this size. But it is a GTX, not a Roadrunner. It does have the correct numbers matching 440 in it, and it's for sale here at Hangsters. We're going to go around the rest of it for you. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today we have a really special guest for you. Really difficult car to find. 1969. Not a Roadrunner. This is a GTX, so it's a 440 car, and even over and above that, it's a four-speed with a Dana rear in it. So we're going to go over it and show you everything we can aesthetically on it, and uh, then we'll get the rest of the videos done. Undercarriage, drive, everything to present everything to you. You can see the gap, the hood fitment is just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. The paint on this thing is not driver quality. It, it approaches a show quality paint job. It is silver. Um, Correct style hood bulges on it, the way they were for 1969. And look at the fitment of this. 
Nice gap the whole way up across, across the front, Plymouth designation, and gap down the side, and everything matches, mates up just as nice as fresh as you'd ever hope to make it fit. Uh, 440 designation on our scoop, because that's what it is. There's no deviations or dents or, or imperfections or anything in the paint or on the wood. Uh, everything is just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. The uh, argent trim around the headlight buckets, nice and fresh just the way it was in 69. Yep, all four of these buckets are just as nice as can be. Trim around the grill. No stone dinghies or marks whatsoever. Uh, plastic on the grill is really nice. The GTX designation on it, it's silver uh, in the back set and um, black, black, black around the uh, surround. It really gives it a nice dramatic look. Front uh, piece underneath the grill, there's no dents or marks or anything from stones being thrown up through the years. Bumper fitment is absolutely spot on. There's also no uh, scuffs or marks or anything on the top of the chrome. The bumper's just as fresh and nice as it was in 69. Go across the front here. No, no dinghies, no marks whatsoever. Just as fresh a front end as you could ever find. Uh, parking lights are amber and nice and shiny the way they should be. And you can see everything on this thing lines up. Everything. Your headlight buckets, your hood, uh, the fenders, uh, the, the whole front end of this car is lined up as perfect as you could possibly get one to fit. And again, it's not a driver quality paint job. It's definitely approaching a, uh, a show quality job. Phenomenal front end. Let's go down the side to see if we can find any imperfections there. Okay, driver's side of our GTX. This is GTX only. Road owners didn't get this. Uh, it's a piece of trim that goes around the car, entirely around the car, both sides. Um, and it's up about, I don't know, we'll call it six inches from the bottom of the car. It's painted flat black underneath that. And they even accented it with a little red stripe. Uh, really gives it a nice look. Side marker lamps just as nice and fit as you'd ever hope to find. No dents or dinghies whatsoever on the uh, wheel lip moldings. Look at this fit. Look at this. And the door, same way. Vinyl top, obviously. Um, appears to be the original one. I can't see where it's ever been replaced. It, uh, it looks like the original material that they used in, uh, in uh, installing these things in 1969. So, uh, good chance that is an original vinyl top you know, on it. The correct wiper arms and blades uh, trim around the base of the. Uh, windshield and around the windshield itself. There's no marks to the dinghies whatsoever. The original bin plate still intact, holding, held on by its uh, six-sided rivets. Dash pad, there's no uh, warps or deviations whatsoever in it and certainly no cracks. The metal part of the dash where it transitions to the base of the windshield is just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. There's not an imperfection in it. Uh, sunshade fade tinted windshield for the front. A nice addition to the car. The uh, trim around these wings usually has patina on it. It's usually deteriorated through the years, and even the wing itself. This does not have any, absolutely none. All new fresh rubbers on it. Uh, drip rail molding. Flawless, no marks whatsoever on it. Tinted glass on the side, too. How about that? It's got tinted glass on the windshield and the side windows, and the back window, so all tinted glass in this. We do have the bill sheet for this too, so you can verify everything on this vehicle through its bill sheet. Standard non uh, remote adjust mirror driver's side. Nice door fitment. Look at the gap. You see the gap on the door and on top here. Look how everything fits the way it should. The window to the rear quarter panel, precise fitment. You could stand there with a garden hose trying to get the water in there and you wouldn't be able to do it. It appears to be the original door handles yet. Uh, certainly don't need to replace the chrome one. It's very nice. GTX designation on the side. Like I said, the GTXs were a step above a Roadrunner. They really had a lot of, uh, a lot of accents on them that the Roadrunners just did not. Plus, 
cost them more money, too. Alt 10. Alt 10 everywhere. Trim around the base of the uh, vinyl top. Really nice. A little bit of a dinghy here whenever they were installing this piece of molding. Apparently, they got a little overzealous with the uh, rubber hammer. There's a little one. You've got to look at an angle to see it, but it's there. The rest of it appears to be just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. There's no deterioration, by the way, uh, evident on the base of the uh, rear light here. Usually these things have some paint chipping or issues along the bottom here because water would tend to lay in this uh, area on this rear light. This one has absolutely none. Side marker lamp in the back, same as it was in the front. Well, this thing has a nice fit to it. The doors fit absolutely precise. Uh, the paint, there's no, there's no warbles or no uh, deviations in the sides of the body. The uh, flat black along the bottom with the red accent stripe really adds a little pizzazz to it. The wheels, Kelsey Hayes, uh, Plymouth Road wheels, 15 inch, correct centers, correct lug nuts, a uh, set of uh, Dunlop uh, uh, radials on it, GT qualifiers, white letter, uh, just adds a lot of lot of look to the car. So you got the front end with absolutely not an imperfection. We couldn't find a single one there, and we just went down the whole body here and didn't find anything there. Glass fitment, everything is just as precise as it should be. Let's go out of back. We've got two more sections. Okay, rear section of our GTX 1969. Just like the hood, look at the uh, look at the gap the whole way around this. Uh, rear deck, just as sweet as can be. And again, I wish you could see the paint on this car. Just absolutely beautiful. It's like running your hands over silk. It's really, really nice. Trim around the uh, tail light. A little tiny bit. You can't, I don't know what to call it. There's little specks every so often. You can see uh, just deterioration through the years of the chrome, but there's no patina where it's actually starting to bubble. I don't feel any of that at all. It has the original argent painted uh, accents on it with nice clear uh, tail light assemblies. Let's look at the other one too while we're at it. Yep, same thing on this one. Same thing. Again, you can see little tiny bits of, I don't know what you want to call it, like measles. But the, 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 you, can't, you can't feel them, they're just there. Um, lens on this one, same as the other one. Trim around it, the uh, argent, just the way it should be. The um, well, Plymouth designation on the back. This filler panel in the back, very hard piece to find. Little tiny bit of patina from where water laid through the years. And none of these are perfect, by the way. I mean, even when they were new, they were not absolute precise, uh, you know, with the chrome plating on them and the accents. This is very nice, and it is original. It is the original tail section to it. Bumper fitment in the back. Just like the front one. No scuffs on the top of the bumper. No dinghies on the back of the bumper. Backup lights nice and clear and the basils around them. Flawless. There's no patina whatsoever on them. I mean absolutely none. Correct style exhaust tips out the back for 1969. An oval type stainless tip that came out the back. So we're three sides for three now. We got the front, we couldn't find anything. Got the whole driver's side, we couldn't find anything. We did the back end here, and we still can't find anything. Okay, paperwork. Everybody always asks, do you have any documentation, any paperwork for the car? Yes, we do. Uh, here's partial uh, title history. The gentleman that I got the car off of got it off of this guy. As far as I know, there's only one previous owner, owner to that. So we have that. Uh, this is a complete breakdown, you can see, of all the options that are on the uh, fender tag. So everything that you see on the fender tag uh, is marked off on this sheet. So you can see the options. It's a very highly optioned car. And here's something that everybody wants to know if you have. How about the original, original build sheet for this vehicle? We have it. There it is. Not only that, here's the original owner's manual. Still in the pamphlet yet. So you got the original owner's manual with the original owner's name on it, by the way, too. Uh, we have everything documentation-wise for this vehicle, showing that it is a real bonafide, correct 
as you see it. Correct color, engine, everything. Uh, okay, this is our last side. I'm trying to find something. I mean, you can't have a car where you don't find something on it. I'm sure I'll find something before it's all over. Again, side marker light, just as flush fitment as you'd ever hope to find. All 10. Wheel lip on this one the same as it was on the other one. Trim around the back light. Another little, little tiny bit. You gotta really look to see it at an angle. But there's a little boing from when they put the uh, the trim on. So you got one on top there and you got one here. Again, it's something I'm picking out that you're gonna find whenever the car was new, it still had it. Didn't matter. Hat shelf, I did neglect to mention it on the other side. The hat shelf with its speaker enclosures are just as fresh and clean as can be. There's no pieces broken out of where the speakers are. Uh, and the, uh, the shelf itself, hat rack, shelf tray, whatever you want to call it, uh, has no fading, no deterioration whatsoever. Nice car so far. Trim around the base of the uh, vinyl top, the same as it was on the other side. Wipes whiskers, I forgot to mention them on the other side. They are new. Uh, so the wipes whiskers have been replaced in the car too. GTX again. Look at this. Door handle. Again, look at this trick. <laughs> the front glass to the rear quarter glass. Um, this is just as precise a fitment as you could ever hope to find. It seals up everywhere. You can feel where the, the glass is actually pushing in on the rubber on top. And you couldn't get water in this car if you tried. Tint it on the side again. White whiskers, same as the other side. Uh, wing area, no patina at all. And this is an important point because these things usually, not just Mopars, but you know, a, a lot of the other cars too, um, have an issue with having patina around these wings if they do have a wing area. This one has absolutely zip. None. Door handle on this side, same as the other, just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. I cut my finger on that bumper underneath there when I stuck my hand on it. Underneath it, there was a little sharp edge. Um, <laughs> correct uh, antenna, correct base. Chrysler Pentastar, just where it should be. Again, look at the door fitment. Look at the gaps front and back on both of these doors. We already said the driver's side, but now look at the passenger side the same way, just precise fit. Really, really nice. You know what? There is, I can't see it, but I can feel it. There is a little scratcher about two inches long. I don't know how it got there, but it's a scratch in the paint. I don't know if we'll mess with it or just maybe hit it with some uh, ultra fine and hit it with a buffer. It'd be ashamed to break this paint. You can, you can hardly see it. You're not going to see it in any of the pictures or in the videos. And I almost missed it, but I did feel it. And then when I look at it, I can't see that it's there. So you know that it's there. We'll look molding in the front the same way as the other three. I can't believe all four of these uh, side marker lights are, are so precisely fit into the body that I can't even feel that they're there. I mean, I, I got to look. I know they're there, but there's no overhang. Usually there's a little bit on the bottom or the top or something. These have none. Absolutely have none. So we're back where we started again. It's a 1969 Plymouth GTX correct number car with a build sheet, with paperwork, and a three pedal car and a 354 Dana rear in it. And all Danas were posy, so you don't have to check them. They were all, they, they never made a Dana in these cars without pause attraction. Um, tinted glass, vinyl top, black in, which we'll see in a second, 15 inch Kelsey wheels that are uh, absolutely like new, correct Mopar centers. The chrome front and back is just as fresh and clean as can be. The, the car is just exemplary. A couple little marks that during the installation of the uh, trim around the rear light, uh, but you won't, again, you can't even see them, but they were probably there from the factory. The car has a phenomenal paint job on it. The fitment is just exemplary. These cars are really difficult to find. There's a lot of road runners. They didn't make a whole lot of GTXs. You can check the numbers of production. And uh, these cars were very rare. Uh, they had uh, 
they had a following, and they still do have a following, because they are an upscale from what a roadrunner was. And certainly mechanically, you got a Dana rear, you got uh, a four-speed, you got a 440, not a 383, and uh, you got a car that's in a great color combination, silver with black accents, uh, Kelsey wheels. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of equipment, and it's something you should jump on a bird and come down here and take a look at at Hangsters in Daytona, but if you can't, that's why we're doing this video and why Devin's going to show you a hundred still photos of this car so that you can see every aspect of this vehicle and see everything that we're pointing to. Uh, you have any questions? Pick up the phone. Give us a call. Any additional photographs or videos or anything that you have uh, that you'd like to have, just let us know. We'll try to accommodate you any way we can. But if you can't make it down, that's why we're doing these. But we'd really prefer you to come down, look at the car, drive the car, and play with it all day. And take a look at everything else we have in here. You're going to see we have 40-some cars on the website. There are 78 cars in this building. So it gives you an idea, you know, how many more that we don't have up on a website that we actually have. So take a look, Hangsters, Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the interior of our 69 Plymouth GTX four-speed car. Um, nice tight headliner in it. Sun visors, no stitching coming loose, and nice and resilient and padded just the way they were. Uh, rear view mirror, no patina. Day night mirror too, by the way. Uh, that was probably standard on a GTX. I don't really know, but it probably was. The um, steering wheel is a wood grain wheel just the way it was from Mopar. Very, very fine hairline crack on top from shrinkage through the years, and it is the, wood, the original wood grain wheel in this car. And another one starting here, just a very, very fine. I can't get my finger to nail in either one of them, but they are there. There's very finite cracks just starting. Uh, very fancy steering wheel. Mopar went to a lot of trouble to make these things, you know, even put the you know, stainless accent around them. The three spokes that are perforated through the center with the Plymouth designation in the center is just as fresh as nice as can be. It's a GTX, so whenever you look at this, it's, it's totally different than looking at a Roadrunner. This one has the... Uh, wood grain all over it. It has genuine imitation lumber on the doors, on the uh, rear side panels, on the console, and on the dashboard. You can see this is all all wood grain. It really adds a lot of uh, accent to this vehicle. The padded dash itself is nice and fresh as can possibly be. The gauge uh, instrumentation cluster, everything is nice and bright. The letters are nice and white in it yet. has the optional tachometer in it also. The switch is in the dashboard for your flashers and headlights and, and wipers and everything. Just as nice and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Could not find them any nicer than that. One thing I just noticed too, this is crazy, but um, dome light works, interior map light works, both passenger assist light work, and I wonder if the glove box light works. What are the chances of that? How about a glove box light that works too? There it is. Then, of course, you have a glove box in the center. Um, geez. The, um, oh, instrumentation. It does have a trio of gauges underneath. It does have a, um, a fuel gauge, amp gauge, and a temp gauge, which I think they all function as they should, but you do have the actual uh, temperature and actual uh, oil pressure gauges and amp gauge underneath the dash. The um, rear seat. Front seats, everything has been redone and everything matches just as nice as can possibly be. Cut pile carpeting in it, not cut pile, loop pile, loop, uh, looped, looped carpeting. Um, seat belts in the uh, rear, seat belts in the front. Uh, so you got a nice complement of uh, seat belt safety equipment in the vehicle already. Set of uh, aftermarket floor mats or rubber mats, but they are in the uh, vehicle with it, front and Nope, just front, not in the rear. Um, let's see. You look inside the doors, just everything is nice and clean. I mean, there's no there's no crap or anything inside around your hinge area. Again, look at the uh, chrome on the wing area. It's just as sweet as could possibly be. Door actuators, nice and shiny and chrome. Window cranks front and rear. And it's got trash trays in the rear, trash tray in the front. Uh, molded armrests front and rear. They're all the way they were in 1969. They're not redone. They are the correct molded style armrests. 
Uh, I can't see anything in this car that's out of place. All the rubbers, all the seals, this has all been replaced. This is all nice, new, resilient rubber. Um, key to the whole operation, though, is this guy. Four-speed Hurst shifter. Uh, this car is just as new a vehicle as you'd ever find anywhere. It's a 1969 uh, Plymouth GTX in a very rare four-speed car. A great color combination, has the Kelsey wheels, we went over all that. The interior of this car mimics the outside of this car. It's just as fresh and clean and nice as it was in 1969 when it was released. So take a look at it. It's here in Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Okay, this is our 69 Plymouth GTX, the real deal, with paperwork. Uh, no remote, got to do it by hand, mirror on that side. The uh, horn blows just the way it should, and you can see the alternator functions when the horn hits. So the alternator is charging, and it is working just the way it should. Gas gauge shows about a quarter of a tank, which is about normal for us. Temperature is just starting to come up a little bit, but we do have auxiliary gauges too. We have a tachometer that you can see is working. So the tach does work in the car. Our auxiliary gauges are all, well, are they functioning? Let's see temperature coming up in it yet? No, the voltmeter is not hooked up. We have to get that hooked up. It's hooked up on the dash, but not here. We're showing about 50, I don't know, 55 pounds of um, oil pressure, and the uh, temperature is up to about 140 to 150 degrees, which would coincide with that. So that's right the way it should be. Left turn signal over here, just working the way it should. Right turn signal, doing the same thing over here. Uh, there's probably not a chance in the world of a radio working from 1969, but we'll try it anyway. It's a wheel radio, but that's certainly nothing you want to take out of there. You're going to put a sound system in it, put it in the glove box or out back. Uh, let's see. Wipers. Where are the wipers? Wipers. Wipers. Uh, on a... Oh, there it is. Nice. Something needs a drop of oil. Oh, now it quit. Now it quit making noise, but... Uh, Still probably something we ought to loop, but the wipers do work as they should. Um, that's it. We'll go show you speedometer working. We'll go for a ride here and see what this guy runs like. Oops. Car goes down the road straight as an arrow. You gotta get up over this lump, but you can see the car just goes tracks just as nice as straight as can possibly be. The fourth gear here. Yeah, there's nobody behind us now. You see the speedometer is working as it should, too. Let's try brakes, no hands. There it is, no hands, brakes, and we're stopped. resolution to them. This guy does. It's got a great sound to it. It's not objectionably loud, but just has a nice deep throaty rumble to it. drives just like it should, has a real nice deep throated tone to it, uh, goes down the road straight as an arrow, I ain't the steering wheel, but goes down the road straight as can be, there's no shakes, shimmies, rattles, squeaks, nothing, it, uh, it's a nice car, um, entire, uh, you just watch us do an entire video with this car, it's 120 degrees out here right now, but it's going up to 150 this afternoon, I heard. Nice straight car. The paint on it is much better than driver quality. All your panel fitment is just as nice and precise as you could ever hope to find. Uh, the interior appointments are just as they were when they were new. Even all the wood grain, genuine imitation wood by the way, 
uh, all through the car, on the dash, on the door panels, everything is nice and fresh. Uh, speedometer enclosure, your gauge cluster and everything, everything functions as it should. Um, there's just absolutely no negatives on this car. I think the whole thing, I think we found one little tiny scratch that we'll probably just hit with a buffer and rub out. That's it. Um, other than that, this is a nice car. And don't forget, it's a documented car, too. This thing has a uh, build sheet. It has a uh, owner history to it. It has a uh, fender tag with the correct breakdown on it. Oop. Nice car. It's a, you know, you're in the market for a Plymouth GTX in a four-speed car. Try finding one, first of all. You know, these things in three pedal cars are just impossible. These are roadrunners. It seems like they bring uh, a lot of buyers once you can find one. And we have one. Actually, we have two. We have one in a roadrunner, and uh, we have this guy. Correct cars, too, by the way. All documented correct cars. So take a look at it. It's your hangsters. Okay, undercarriage, 1969, Plymouth GTX, three-pedal car, four-speed car. Um, engine completely freshened up. Everything's been out and uh, just completely redone. All internals done correctly, I'm sure. Uh, valve housing area, no leaks. Engine, no leaks. Transmission, there are no leaks. Donnie put a uh, br uh, brass uh, plug in here whenever he uh, tops off all the fluid. So that's why you see a little tiny bit of nice, clear... Uh, gear oil there. You can see it coming from where his plug is to the bottom there. But no leaks. Uh, floor pans themselves, they're, they're original floor pans from Mopar. Still have the splatter undercoating on them that was done in 1969. The subframes are just as sweet and nice as can be. There's no... I don't even see a jack mark on them anywhere. Yeah, a couple of real light ones. One there. Gotta be one here. One there. Very, very light though, you can hardly notice some original, um, original parking brakes still hooked up and functional. Uh, steering box, you can see, has been out and it's either been replaced or uh, redone, one of the two. New uh, Pitman arm, new idler arm on it also. Uh, disc brakes in the front, they're not brand new, they are the ones that came with the vehicle though. And the calipers are nice and fresh looking yet. Rotors are nice and thick. Vacuum plates have no deterioration whatsoever on them. The drop downs in the front uh, fenders where the uh, inner fender panel comes down and mates to the subframe, just as nice as can possibly be. Thankfully, thankfully no one has uh, uh, hit them with a jack stand through the years. Fender wells uh, sound dead in the same way from uh, Chrysler. This thing must have had the optional sound deader material added to it. They always add a little bit to it, but then this thing is completely done with it. And you can see it's the original stuff from Mopar. Um, new Hearst shifter. Someone has installed a brand spanking new Hearst shifter in this guy. Uh, 833 Mopar tranny, which is impossible to break. Conventional starter. Doesn't have a gear reduction starter on it. The uh, tail shaft is nice and clean. There's one drip right there, but you can see that there's a new seal just put in. So. Uh, new U-joint also in the front and in the back. New U-joint front and back of the drive shaft. No leaks from the speedometer uh, cable. Jeez, I don't see anything at all in the front of this car. The floor pans, uh, as they transition back, the uh, floor pans still have all their structural supports in them. And you can see where they're spot welded to the rocker panels, just the way they were in 1969, because they are original. The uh, pipes themselves come off the uh, standard cast iron exhaust manifolds. I'm going to call them two. <clears throat> I'm going to call them two and a half inch pipes. They might be two and a quarter, but I, they kind of look like two and a half, so we'll call them two and a half. The, um, everything has been refreshing on this car. I can't see anything that hasn't been addressed. And thankfully, no real big dents in the oil pan. A little mark here. Somebody, when they jacked it up, put a little bit of the edge of the jack there and put a little indenture. Of that oil pan, but certainly nothing that uh, you'll probably even see in the in the video. The uh, floor pans again, totally undisrupted. They are original with all the original structural bracing. The um, mufflers are uh, a pair of Flow Masters that uh, these uh, two and a half inch pipes go into. <coughs> um, multi leaf rear springs, seven on this side, six on that side, just the way they should be. And I forgot to mention. New shocks in the front, new shocks in the back. 
subframes in the back. There's one uh, jack mark or, or uh, jack stand mark. Same as here. There's one on each side. The torque boxes themselves are very nice condition. Nice, uh, nice heavy torque boxes on it. It has a uh, Dana 60 carrier in it, nine and three quarter inch ring gear. You can't break it. It's impossible. I don't care what you can do. You can drop a hammer all day at seven grand on a Hemi, and you can't break that thing. Subframes where they transition up over the rear differential, really nice condition. There's absolutely no indication that anything has ever been modified or messed with on this vehicle. They go the whole way back. They're, again, original undercoating, sound deadener on the floor pans, and the drop downs in the quarters also. That's all original. No rust. Absolutely none. None that I can see anyway. Uh, drum brakes in the back. Uh, discs in the front. These are 11 by 2 and a half drums in the back. Pretty sizable drum for that uh, era. Uh, they had 11 by 3 drums in the front, but of course the disc brakes were an option. They were supposed to work better. The um, pipes coming out of the uh, mufflers, I'm going to call them 2 and a quarter instead of 2 and a half. But nice new exhaust system. You can see that the whole way. Uh, it, it, it's just as fresh underneath here as it was when it was new. I can't tell you if it's the original gas tank or a replacement tank, but it looks as though it's been cleaned up, but it's not new, so it, 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 it it's a, I don't know. It, it could be the original one yet that someone has just taken and cleaned up. The uh, correct style exhaust tip stainless going out the back. The transitional piece that goes from one subframe to the other, there's no pull marks or no dents whatsoever on it. There's absolutely nothing deteriorating under this car. Absolutely nothing. I, I don't see anything. There's no leaks of it into the drive line at this point anyway. There will be in the future. It's a muscle car, so if it's not next year, it'll be the year after. There'll be some oil on the floor. Uh, there's absolutely nothing to call a negative on underneath this thing. Uh, you can see you can see for yourself the exhaust system, the uh, the, the floor pans, the, uh, the all the welding from the floor pan to the uh, rocker panels is still original. The spot welds the way they came. The springs have a nice curvature to them. The drive line itself is just exemplary in this vehicle. And it's a four speed and it's a Mopar, so you know it's going to be fun to drive. It's available here at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida. So if you're in the market for any kind of a Mopar, it's a real collectible piece with paperwork. Take a look at this guy because it's it's really a well-documented, authentic 69 GTX.